the sharp edge of a razor is difficult to pass over. Thus, the wise say, the path to salvation is hard. This ancient proverb from the Upanishads, popularized by novelist W. Somerset Maom, likens life's journey to walking on a razor's edge. In more ordinary terms, life often balances precariously between extremes. Daily existence can seem lukewarm, a narrow middle path between chaos and stagnation, between convulsion and coma. Yet it's precisely on this edge, at the brink of turmoil, but not past it, that some of the most mystifying phenomena occur from the human brain's electrical symphony to flocks of birds in flight, from historical revolutions to moments of spiritual epiphany, complex systems across biology, society, and mysticism all share a common theme. They thrive at a critical point where small actions can trigger sweeping changes. Let's explore this intriguing interdisciplinary idea through tangible examples that span neuroscience, ecology, sociology, and spirituality. Your brain at this very moment is dancing on a razor's edge. Neuroscientists have found evidence that the brain operates near a critical point, a finely tuned equilibrium between two disastrous extremes, epileptic seizures on one side and coma on the other. In fact, brain activity seems to be poised at a critical point, optimizing information processing and consciousness. If the neural excitations in the cortex spiral out of control, a seizure erupts. If they die down too much, the brain loses conscious awareness. Remarkably, under healthy conditions, the billions of neurons in our brain self-organize to stay in that sweet spot of dynamic balance. Researchers observe bursts of neural firing called neuronal avalanches, which follow scale-free statistical patterns a hallmark of criticality in physics. This near critical state may be what enables us to think, adapt, and remain conscious, perched between chaos and silence. Why would the brain choose to teeter on such a knife's edge? Because criticality confers powerful benefits. At the critical point, a system is exquisitely sensitive, able to react to the smallest inputs yet also remains partially ordered so that it doesn't tip into complete noise. As one scientist colorfully explained, you've got randomness and you've got order. And right between them, you've got the phase transition. You want to get as close as possible to chaos, but you don't want to go into the chaos. You want to be on the edge, in the brain. This means that a single neuron's signal can propagate through vast networks, enabling creativity or insight, without causing runaway excitation. It's a delicate equilibrium, almost miraculous, as psychology professor Nicole Rust notes. Given that the brain is full of feedback loops that could easily amplify activity into instability. Yet for the most part, our minds stay balanced. In a sense, ordinary life is a state between a seizure and a coma. The brain maintains a middle ground, preventing both wild neural storms and flat-lined silence. If you've ever seen a starling murmuration, a great whirling cloud of thousands of birds twisting and pulsing in unison, you've witnessed criticality in nature. Each bird in a flock reacts to its neighbors in a split second, and those local interactions scale up to produce breathtaking collective motion. Scientists have found that starling flocks essentially fly in critically networked formations, where Thousands of birds move with uncanny coordination, with individual movements rippling almost instantaneously across the entire group. These ripples are so fast and far-reaching that they suggest the flock is poised at the brink of a phase transition, a state where a small movement by one bird can
can influence birds far across the flock. In physics terms, the correlation length in such a system is enormous, meaning the whole group behaves almost like a single organism at the critical point. Such flocks exhibit critical behavior, where a slight turn by one bird can propagate as a wave through the entire swarm. The collective movement emerges from local interactions, showing how complex systems achieve coherence at the edge of chaos. This phenomenon isn't limited to birds. In many animal groups, schools of fish, swarms of insects, there are similar tipping point dynamics. Take honeybees. When a beehive decides to swarm and find a new home, it does so via a kind of quorum sensing criticality. Scout bees go out to evaluate potential nest sites. They return and perform waggle dances to vote for the best site. For a while, multiple options are debated in buzzes and dances. But once the number of scouts favoring one site crosses a certain threshold, a tipping point is reached. The scouts emit a special high-pitched piping signal and suddenly the entire cluster of thousands of bees becomes excited, warming up their flight muscles in unison for takeoff. The moment enough bees agree on a plan, the consensus cascades through the swarm, and in an instant, the whole colony lifts off to relocate a giant collective decision, precipitated by the addition of just a few key bees to the quorum. Nature is full of these chain reactions. One minute nothing is happening, the next minute an entire field of creatures is on the move. Human societies are complex systems as well, and they too have critical thresholds. History provides dramatic examples of massive social transformations sparked by single events. One powerful case occurred in Tunisia in December 2010. Mohamed Bou Azizi, an impoverished street vendor, reached a breaking point after enduring years of harassment and injustice. In an act of despair and protest, he set himself on fire outside a government office. This one tragic act became a catalyst for chaos in Tunisia, igniting public anger that had been simmering beneath the surface. Bou Azizi's self-immolation was the last straw for many Tunisians. Within weeks, mass demonstrations spread across the country, ultimately toppling the establishment. The shockwaves did not stop at Tunisia's borders. This incident was the spark that lit the wider Arab Spring uprisings across multiple countries. Here was a social system primed for change, needing just one critical flashpoint to explode. This pattern, long periods of tension, released suddenly by a minor trigger, recurs throughout history. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914 was one bullet that catalyzed World War I. Because Europe's political powder keg was ready to blow, the beating of Rodney King caught on video was a spark that set off the Los Angeles protests in 1992 after deep accumulation of anger in the community. A single Twitter hashtag today can unleash a social wave if enough people have been primed to respond. Sociologists talk about threshold models of collective behavior. Each person has a certain threshold for joining a protest or a riot, and once enough, others join. Meeting one's threshold, a cascade of participation begins, which may lead to good or bad outcomes. Society, in effect, can sit at a critical point where one more voice, one more event, tips the balance from calm to chaos. This happens on a personal level too. We all know of individuals who underwent a sudden epiphany or drastic change of heart from a seemingly small input. Those who, with hearing one sentence, are transformed, as the Persian saying goes. Perhaps you've experienced it. A piece of advice or a line in a book strikes you at just the right moment, and it changes your perspective forever. The information, or idea itself 
might not affect someone else the same way. But because of your internal state, your receptiveness at that critical juncture, it triggers a phase transition in your thinking. Neuroscience has even studied aha moments when a solution to a problem suddenly clicks in the brain, often after a long period of subconscious processing. A tiny insight can rewire one's worldview, the mental equivalent of a drop that makes flood. Not only do political or mental revolutions happen at critical moments, spiritual awakenings can as well. In mystical traditions, there is a concept of sudden illumination or gnosis that can occur in a flash after long preparation. Sufi mystics, for example, seek a state of ecstasy where they feel union with the divine. In the Sufi dervish practice of whirling dance meditation, something remarkable is observed. At the height of spiritual fervor, a dervish may spontaneously tear off his cloak, a gesture symbolizing casting off the ego or worldly attachments. Eyewitness accounts in Persian literature note that if one dervish, overcome by rapture, rends his garment, the others often follow suit in a cascading reaction, collectively entering an ecstatic state. It's a chain reaction of transcendence. One person's moment of illumination literally spreads to others in the ceremonial circle, each reinforcing the fervor of the group. What begins as an individual ecstatic outburst becomes a shared state of enlightenment as the whole gathering whirls on the edge of the mystical unknown. This imagery of dervishes discarding their cloaks en masse beautifully parallels the other systems we've discussed. It's the tipping point of spiritual fervor. Each seeker in the circle is like a grain in the sand pile. As music and devotion build, they approach a threshold. When the threshold is crossed by one passionate dervish crying out and casting off his robe, the rest go critical too, surrendering to the ecstatic trance. Mystics sometimes call it unity of hearts, many individuals resonating as one. We might not usually think of mysticism in terms of complex system dynamics, but the pattern fits perfectly. A gradual buildup leads to a qualitative leap where a higher state is reached. The phase transition here is from mundane awareness to higher consciousness. Have you ever asked yourself, why do I keep seeing the same ad when I already know I don't want the product? The answer lies in flooding the zone. Marketers understand that a purchase is not a steady persuasion, but a tipping point, a threshold moment, almost like a neural seizure. Psychology calls it the rule of seven. You need to encounter a message multiple times before you act. Each exposure strengthens neural pathways, a process known in neuroscience as long-term potentiation, while doubts are gradually attenuated. By managing perception, marketers ensure you see their product in different contexts, on TV, on your phone, in a friend's feed. Over time, it feels as though everyone is using it, though for different reasons. This builds a complex system of cues around you. Like neurons firing until a cascade ignites, your brain reaches a critical state. The product shifts from unfamiliar to inevitable. At that instant, resistance collapses. The conversion isn't a slow decision. It's a sudden switching event, triggered by carefully orchestrated repetition and consistency. Romance, too, follows the logic of criticality. Picture someone persistently pursuing love. At first, the answer is no way. Yet over time, through sheer presence, being there at birthdays, breakups, casual walks, shared jokes, the pursuer floods the other's world with cues. Each encounter is like another signal strengthening a synaptic pathway, priming perception without forcing it. 
What emerges is a complex system of memories and emotions. Laughter, comfort, reliability, small kindnesses repeated across occasions. Just as marketers build familiarity through ads, the would-be lover builds inevitability through consistency. Neuroscience tells us that repeated exposure rewires associations. The once dismissed figure becomes part of the mental landscape. Then, in one moment, a smile, a glance, a sudden recognition, the threshold is crossed. The brain saturated with accumulated impressions tips into a new state. Why not? It is not gradual persuasion, but a conversion event. A seizure-like shift in perception where resistance collapses and attraction crystallizes. Love, in this frame, is not merely a feeling, but a phase transition born of presence, persistence, and the dynamics of systems at the edge. Whether in neurons lighting up with insight, birds flocking, bees swarming, crowds rising, or even a purchase or a romance, the motif is the same complex systems edging toward critical points. At those thresholds, small pushes yield big responses. Parts synchronize and new behaviors emerge. Scientists call this zone the edge of chaos, neither rigid order nor pure anarchy, but the razor's edge where adaptability and transformation flourish. Living on this edge requires dynamic balance, like a bicycle that stays upright only in motion, life at every scale operates within a narrow band of viability. Our hearts beat with variability. Too regular or too erratic and danger follows. Earth's climate has long stayed within life-supporting bounds, yet we know a few parts per million of CO2 could tip it into crisis. Critical thresholds are everywhere. But this fragility is also strength. A brain at criticality learns and creates. Ecosystems evolve. Societies reinvent themselves. As physicist Maximino Aldana notes, criticality optimizes the balance between resilience and adaptability. Systems remain stable, yet flexible enough to amplify the smallest constructive signals. So, if you build a life around complex creative ideas, steady habits, and methodical work, you can expect non-linear breakthroughs and epiphanies to emerge. Because, as the saying goes, chance favors the prepared mind.